fuck's right. going on? Right. <laughs> Welcome to Guitar Shack. It might look a bit like a scene from Deliverance with Mike with his uh, his hat over his eyes, but as we all know, Mike's you know a Gibson fan and a V Flying V fan and now an Edwards fan. But if you've got anything with Fender on the headstock, forget it. Now the point of this is that I know this guitar is not one of Mike's favourites. He doesn't know what it is, so hence he's blindfolded. But we're going to let him play it. Um, see what he thinks of it, and then we'll unveil the guitar by taking his hat off and see what he thinks. I do know, I'll tell you this Mike, it's a 24 and a half inch scale neck. So <coughs> it's very... 24 and very... three quarters? No, 24 and a half. Is it? 24.5. Oh, no, no. right, okay. So, it's a sort of size and shape guitar that I know you'll like. So let's see. Take right. it away. Right, I can't see a damn thing. So if I make any duff notes even more than usual, you just have to, you know... Don't worry about it. Uh, now, okay, so let's feel what we've got here. We have got a Les, obviously some sort of Les Paul type guitar here. Uh, yeah, filling on the top. It's yeah, it's not carved top, is it? What well, it could be, but don't feel like it. Mm, medium weight. It's not a very heavy one, so it's got me some sort of. I mean, it feels very. It feels the lacquering feels really thick. Actually, it doesn't, doesn't feel that thick. That is, that's not as thick as a Les Paul normally is. Oh, Archie, you've got a bit of shaping here. You don't think get that on a Les Paul. So you have got some. Could be a Vox, probably. Let's have a. This is a. This feels a really thick sort of. Actually, I was going to say it feels like a fifties neck, but it, it's sort of wide. But then it go. It cuts in. So uh, let's feel what this head. Oh my god, here we go, I know what this is. This is a fucking Dean, isn't it? Maybe it isn't a Dean, this, this feels like a Dean headstock to me. But anyway, I'm not a great fan of Deans, but let's feel this, hold on, let's feel this. Don't do anything to try and give it away. Oh, play the guitar. Right, let's play it away. <laughs> Clarity loss on the tone. I don't know what it is. It sounds good and it plays plays very well actually. See how it rings. Yeah, it's good. It feels very solid. It's shaped. Uh, hmm. It's pretty damn good actually. Yeah, it's the tone's okay. Let me just try it again. Tone control, Mike. Tone controls are the bottom controls. 
Yeah, that's a bit screwy, isn't it? Well, yeah, but... It doesn't seem very bright to me. That's all I'm thinking. It doesn't seem very bright. Let's just try a different picker. <laughs> Yes. Put your glasses uh, on. So now we can do a proper review. I've well, played enough. Um, is that? Oh, that's the volume. Yeah. Right, that's the volume. Well, the pickups are good because there's no hum and feedback and all that sort of stuff. Um, oh, I thought it was a Dean. Just for, I, I, I haven't really played that many Paul Reed Smiths. I've played some of the really expensive ones and just thought they were overpriced. But uh, it's a nice looking instrument. I mean, there's some nice wood. I mean, yeah. feels very solid. Feels quite yeah. big. How much is this? 500, about 550. 550? Yeah, solid instrument, but I can't stand it looking Paul Reed Smiths. That's why I, I wanted you to. Play it, but there's lots of guitars out there that play well, but I just think they're the crap. Yeah, but that's yeah. not the point of having yeah. a review, is it? The point of the review is what does yeah. it play like and yeah, what does quality, it sound like. The quality of this is very good. Um, Korea, Korean guitars. Yeah. Uh, World but, music company. But let's it's face it, we all live on the same planet. What what matters is how good the machinery is and and the final finishing really. So it could be made in Bognor Regis for all I care. It, it, um, you know, oh, it's got to be American this, or it's got to be Japanese this, or whatever. That's why they're old cobblers. If you've got a nicely crafted instrument, as I said, you can see where they cut down on the price. There's a little bit of a bend there, but it, it's not really okay. I don't know. Is this a is this a one? That's, you can see actually. There's a there's a top there. There's a there's a, a veneer. Quite a, quite a decent. It's a maple cap. It's, yeah, it's a maple cap. So that's quite nice. Um, it's not bound. It's just masked. Yeah, I must admit, since I've got my black. JS, I'm not really that. I used to be mad on tiger stripes because mainly because when I was looking around, there weren't that many. But now every man, these bloody dogs got a tiger stripe, um, even on top of uh, an Epiphone Les Paul copy, is a bloody tiger stripe because they've got a wafer thin tiger stripe. And you know, it's sort of for me, it's all becoming a little bit passe. No, it's just like when there's something that is that isn't that's uh, you, not unique but you know rare it, you want it but when every man who's dog can go and buy a top and have a tiger stripe it sort of loses the appeal to me so that's why I've, I've gone for just black because there's none of that bullshit involved with that or is it book matched is it how thick I mean I've had some really gorgeous tiger stripes in my time and there's quilted maple and you know god knows what else and yeah it's a nice instrument it's uh ew. I knobs. don't like the knobs. The knobs look disgusting. Mm. Um, 
Not only are they disgusting, they're called speed knobs, but I always find that I, I'm, I'm slower turning these bloody things than, than the top hat knobs, which I prefer. Um, the bridge, yeah, perfectly functional. Maybe some of you guys out there can point me as to why people string it the other way around. That, you've no choice with that bridge. Really? Mm. Oh, it must be some, oh, it does this or does that, and makes the string tension and makes the guitar sound better. But, you know, once it's gone over the top of a bridge, I suppose... As long as it's making the, making the connection the right point, who cares? What's this? What's this made of? Tusk. Black tusk. Which is another, lots... In, another endangered species bites the dust. No, it's not. It's an artificial man-made... Yeah. The Vox so it is... isn't tusk then, really? It's no. man-made plastic? <laughs> yeah, it's T-U-S-Q, I think it's spelled. I may oh, be wrong. Oh, that's a nice marketing ploy, isn't it? it yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not bound, but it is... I mean, this is finished off really nicely. Feels like you've got a good old slab on the neck. It's a very big neck's very comfortable. I found it very comfortable. The frets are very smooth. Um, feels a bit slow. The you need some fast fret on it. Get some get some lemon oil on here, Neil. Clean it up a bit. That would speed it up a bit. Action's very low. Yeah, it's good. I quite like the zebra uh, pickup arrangement. Uh, as I said, you know, it looks nice. The back is quite a nice bit of mahogany on there, really nice. I think it was also nice if you look closely at the fretboard, the rosewood, but particularly up, up the towards top the top. Here. Yeah, it's, it's really nice quite... when, you, when you actually get some variance in the rosewood. Um, yeah, I'm an ebony fretboard fan, so rose, rosewood's okay. And these these flying fish birds. birds <laughs> yeah, yeah. It tuned, I had to tune it up at the beginning. It is quality, and and this is feels a really this feels like a pro instrument for how much five hundred five hundred and fifty quid. Yeah, and it's nice. Uh, the knobs are absolutely disgusting. Um, this cutaway is good. You've got good a good access to the cutaway, and it's got some good tones. Although, as I said, it sounded as though it was missing a bit of treble. Can we hear it clean? Of course, you can. Anything for you, sir. That's a nice middle pickup. Oh, sorry, both pickups selected in middle position. That's I always like that sort of thing. I think it sounds really nice clean. Yeah, it does sound nice clean. Um, let's just go up to the dirty one again. Yeah, 
They've to- I don't know why they switched it around from what the normal Gibbo configuration is, but uh, that's certainly thrown me. Very nice. Do they come in any different colours or anything now? Yeah, I think they come in black and white. With a flame top or just solid colours? Solid. Colors? I'm sure they come, but I'll just check. Yeah. I mean, this, this sort of shape uh, reminds me of a Weston guitar I used to have. My brother had one as well. They were the sort of early Japanese reasonable quality build guitars, and uh, it had, but though they had a double horn thing going on, and they were good, they were well made. This is a solid, well made guitar that I absolutely would not buy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's good if you like Paul Reed Smith, and I suppose what it really is is a bit like a Les Paul studio. If you want a Les Paul, but you can't go the extra mile. This gives you, what do they call this one? With it? It's the SE, that in particular guitar oh, is the... the other ones, they've got double horns. Some there. of them, are. That, that's yeah. the PRS SE245, and the 245 is 24.5 inch. Ah, yeah? right, scale length, right, okay. So, so that's the, normally it's 24 and 3 quarters, you see. Yeah, yeah. that's the made in Korea range. <coughs> mm. Whereas, you know, Les Paul Studio is still made in the US, isn't it? You tell me, mate. I mean, that's that's... Competing with an Epiphone, really? Uh, I would say. Well, well, this is there's no competition. This will blow an Epiphone, I think, in, into the into the mm. bin where it quite rightly belongs. <laughs> but that's um, that's unfair. I know it's unfair. But, it's know. a very nice Epiphone, particularly the elitist range. I'm sure there is. Um, okay, <laughs> but I wouldn't buy this either. Um, <laughs> yeah, very nice. If you like Paul Reed Smith's style of guitars, this is very well made. Uh, it's got a little bit of. Uh, I mean, this is really nice, actually. The bit where the the mask binding is lovely, the, isn't the, it? The, the the top here, yeah, the top where the the cap is on on the. Uh, is that what they call it? Mask binding. Yeah. Yeah, that is really nice, and there's a good spray. To, I mean, the way the colour of, of the body is lovely. Uh, yeah, they've done a decent job on all this. This disgusting thing to get rid of them, um, and. Um, but and it's it's not it's got some weight and it gives you some sustain and it's nice and all that stuff. Uh, so if you love Paul Reed Smith and I can't say if you can't afford a the big boy one, go for it. Definitely go for it. This is a great guitar. Um, but me, not my sort of thing really. But it's a, been a very interesting challenge. Also trying to play blindfolded. I thought Neil was going to engage in some weird sex games and I'd find all sorts of things bouncing off my face. That's next week when Steve Charles comes around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a pervert. So, um, yeah, okay guys, a bit of a weird one that, this is our May Day Bank Holiday review, and um, yeah, if you like Paul Smiths and you've got 500 quid, yeah, this is good, good, good stuff, uh, and uh, you've got a sort of pseudo Les Paul tone going on there. You'd be really happy with that guitar if you were, if you wanted a PRS and you came home with absolutely. that. Absolutely, You'd be absolutely. really, really happy. Oh yes, it's, it's a stu- it's the build quality is top notch, top notch build quality, I don't care if it's career or... As I said, Bognor Regis, it doesn't matter. It's really, it's really uh, got, got it where it counts. And the pickups, listen. If I can find the volume control. Right, the volumes are here, tones are here. Just so. <laughs> See, low noise, really good. It's got it where it counts. Okay, hope you enjoyed the review. And, uh, Next week, Neil will be wearing a gimp mask or something. Catch you later.